Okay, welcome back, class two. Welcome back to more tallying time and counting coins and place values. I know you're probably thinking, how much longer are we going to learn how to tell time? <laughs> okay, I, you've learned how to tell time by the hour and half past the hour. And today we're going to learn how to tell time a quarter past the hour. If you haven't learned that, some of you guys may know that. A quarter past the hour and then just a little bit on, on cutting down on counting coins. I think you guys might have a grasp of how to count coins. So we're just going to do a little bit more, not too much more. We're going to go into place values and then into double digit addition and then double digit subtraction and then double digit multiplication. <laughs> All right, so let's um, go to your page on telling time. It says page 72 on the bottom. Follow me as I read. It says tell time a quarter of the hour. I can tell a, the quarter hour on the clock. It says heavy weights were put in clocks to make them tell time better. The clocks were very big and each town had a town clock. Everyone would look at the town clock to tell the time. Was the time three o'clock, half past three, or a quarter past three? And you see three clocks here. Okay, notice that the little hand tells the time, and that was the first lesson we had on telling the time. We follow the little hand, and that tells us what time it is. The big hand tells us one minute, and when it's straight up, it's three o'clock. All right? Now, when the big hand that tells how many minutes moves to straight down to the bottom, it's half past or 30 minutes past the hour. And when that is moving, this one's moving a little bit slower, and it's moving from the three to the four, but it's not four o'clock until the minute hand goes all the way around. Now, how about when the big hand that was straight up moves only halfway past the half past, which is to the three instead of to the six. Okay, let me show you on the board. If I have, if I have a pizza, and I divide the pizza in half, that's half and half, right? But if I divide, that's, uh, and I give you, I eat one and you eat one, I eat one out of two. So that's half. If I cut it in four, there's four pieces, one, two, three, four, okay? So if I eat one, that's one out of four, and that's where we get one fourth or one quarter. Quarter means means this this is a quarter quarter is fourths like it if you say um it comes from cuatro if you speak spanish cuatro quarter that's where we get quarter it it doesn't mean a coin quarter and the reason the coin quarter is called a quarter because a quarter is 25 cents. You have four quarters. One of them, 25 cents is one out of four, out of cuatro, okay? So if your big hand, let's put it, let's make my clock correct here. Should have prepared this before. All right, we have three o'clock, half past three or 3.30. But when I'm at three o'clock and I go and I cover this much time, it's one part out of four parts. That's why it's a quarter past. This is one quarter past the hour. So the last picture that you have right here, it says quarter past three. 3.15 or quarter, 12 to 3. I'm sorry, I, I should go down. 3.15 or quarter past 3 is 15 minutes past 3. The big hand moved from 12 to 3. The big hand moved from 12 to 3, which is 15 minutes. Remember, we count by 5s, 5, 10, 15. A quarter way around the circle. The little hand is still close to 3 or just past 3. So it's a quarter past the little hand is a quarter of the way 
of the circle. This is the circle, it's only a quarter, one out of four parts. That's why it's called a quarter. Now, on the back side of that page, and that little story that I told you about um, the big clock, in the olden days, many, many years ago, people didn't have watches. A lot of them didn't have clocks. They were too poor to afford a clock. Only the rich people had the clock. They had a tower in usually in the center of the town with a big clock up at the tower, and it would um, show the time. And sometimes it would it would make a sound, a chiming sound, um, so people would know what it was. When I was a little girl, and I would go visit my grandmother, she lived in a really small town up in the hills, and they didn't even have a clock. They couldn't afford a clock. The town couldn't. So the the church would ring the bells every hour. So if it was one o'clock, they would you just hear boom. If it was three o'clock, they'd ring it three times. If it was six o'clock, they'd ring it six times. So people would stop and listen, and they would know what time it was, okay? So that is our little story on clocks. So on the big hand, you need to be really careful because some of the, some of the questions, some of the clocks, uh, the little hand is, let me see. Um, actually, they're all, they're all quarters. So they're not going to ask you what the hour is. So there is not going to be an old clock. So like, for example, this one, if you're not sure, it, I can tell this is a little hand, but if you weren't sure, there is not going to be a three o'clock. So this cannot be three o'clock. So you know, all of these are going to be a quarter past. So make sure you read these correctly. The next page that you're going to have is one on place values, just like we did last week. All right. These little bars, each little square inside a bar, each little square is equivalent to one of these that you use for counting here in the classroom. Each bar is always going to be 10 squares. So you don't have to count the squares. You, you just say 10. You count them by 10s. All the yellow bars are 10 squares. So for example, this one, you just know that 10 and 10 is 20. You do it in your head. Don't count each little square. That's what they want you to do here. So here, you write, I have two tens, but I have no one little squares. So you put a zero, and then you put the equivalent. So they gave you the first answer. You have one bar, which is one ten. Then you have six squares. You have six ones. So together, a 10 and a 6 is 16, all right? So you're going to do that for the front and the back page. Uh, and the page after that, they didn't give you bars. They gave you objects, okay? They want you to understand that this is not about counting bars. It's about counting anything that you might have to count in life, all right? If you want to count your toes, your toes all are equivalent to a bar. So you always say, I have 10 toes, unless you're missing one, okay? So you're going to, with your pencil, circle 10 objects. You see a line of ladybugs here. Don't assume there's 10 ladybugs there. You need to count them and make sure it's 10. So you circle all the 10s that you can find and you put how many 10s you found. If you have, in this case, here's 10 ants. So they put one 10. And there was three ants left over, so you put a three, all right? And the next thing and the last thing. I gave you a paper that looks like this. It's got, I cut mine up already. So it looks like this, and there's some coins here on the bottom. You're going to cut these coins out, all right? You're going to cut the coins out. And you're going to cut the names. Let me show you mine. You're going to need some scissors and a glue stick for this. All right. I don't like liquid glue. Try not to use liquid glue. But if that's all you have, that's fine. You're going to take the names of your coins and put them. You can, eat, you have, you can put them across the top here. So you have pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. And it doesn't matter which order you put it in. I like to put my things in order. So I put it from smallest to biggest. All right. I put penny, nickel, dime, and quarter. You're going to glue those on there. Then you're going to cut these out individually. Try to cut nice and neat, not sloppy, okay? So let's say I cut I cut that one out. Uh, see, let's say I cut that one out. That is a nickel. So I'm going to glue that one. 
underneath where it says nickel, okay? I cut all of these out, and this one says, this one says five cents. I'm gonna put that under whatever value this coin, the name of that coin has, all right? So you're gonna put anything that's related to a penny here, anything related to a nickel here, a dime and a quarter, all right? And that is the last thing for the extra math that you have. Remember that you should be practicing your, um, your multiplication 15 minutes every day. If you are ready for a test, a multiplication test, and I haven't given you one, I try to keep up with who needs a test, but if I don't give you one, remind me. When you come in to pick up your packet, I will give you a multiplication test. Um, and you need to be working out of your green books 30 minutes every day, half an hour. You can do more if you want, but minimum 30 minutes. Did I say days? 30 minutes. <laughs> um, I try to write on, on your green, green book pages, that green math book that you guys Book three one three two book two four. I try to write green book and a green pen on top, so you'll know those are from your green book pages. All right. If you have any questions with your math, go ahead, call me, text me, come visit. I'm here till two thirty. Uh, I believe every day except for Thursdays. I'm only here till two. Okay. All right. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.